All right, so in this video, I want to show you that how you can go from the list screen to the detail screen and also passing information from the list screen to the detail screen. We're going to be working with coffee, so I'm going to list out some coffee, different types of coffee, and when you click or touch one of the coffee or tap on it, it's going to take you to the detail screen. So the first thing we need is some coffee images. I've already downloaded some images, so let's go to the assets and I can simply drag this. By the way, you can also use developmental assets. I'll show them later sometime. So here are our coffees. Uh, I think the middle one over here, that's the hot coffee. So I'm just gonna say hot. And this one looks like espresso. So I'm gonna say just espresso. And this is cappuccino. So I'm just gonna say cappuccino. Obviously you can rename them any way you like, okay? So the first task for me at least is to display these things or images as well as the coffee information on the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a model for it. Now in actual application, you should be creating a view model and not really the model. The model shouldn't be displayed on the screen. So I can go ahead and create a view model if you want to. So I can go ahead and do that. Uh, let me go ahead and create a new group. We'll go over different, like what is exactly is model and view models and all those things later on. And that's a completely separate talk, topic of MVVM framework uh, design pattern. Okay, so I'm just gonna say coffee and coffee view model. I mean, you can say coffee also if you want to. So here we go. Usually when I'm creating view models, I usually rename them to be view models, like coffee view model and all that stuff. Import. Swift UI. So let's go ahead and create a model of coffee. So what should we have in our coffee model? What do we want to actually display on the screen? I'm gonna go ahead and say most probably name of the coffee and also the image. So I'm just gonna put in image URL. There we go, all right. Um, I also want this coffee to be displayed in a list view control which means that I have to use or conform to the identifiable protocol. And identifiable protocol basically allows the list to ensure that each item that is being displayed in the list is separate. The only requirement is that you should have the ID, which is unique. Okay, so there we go. So there we go. We have our coffee structure, which contains ID, name and image URL. Now I'm gonna also go ahead and create uh, an extension on it. This is just to return the coffee. Most probably your coffee is coming from some database or a web service, but right now I'm just gonna hard code it as a static function. So static function all, and this is going to return you a list of coffee. And we are going to return a static list of coffee. We're, our coffee is not really coming from anywhere, all right? Okay, so now we can actually go ahead and return this. So I'm gonna go ahead and say coffee, name, and uh, whatever, cappuccino. Most probably I'm messing up the spelling. Now, one thing to note over here is that I will be using state, all right? This is just a simple example. I will be using state, but in actual application, you should be using binding. Very, very important to note. That's all right, because I am currently just showing you that how you can pass the data and I don't really want to go to the trouble of creating the did set and all that stuff, but I will show you later on. But in actual application, since this is your data, you should be using state, uh, sorry, you should be using object binding and not state that I will show you, all right? So this is just to show you that how you can go from page one to page two. I know that people are going to email me, hey, why didn't you use object binding? Well, I know, I, this is not the point of the, the whole demo that I'm building. All right, and this is, I guess, black coffee, so I can just say regular coffee, I guess. And I'm not sure what we named the image for the regular coffee. Well, we just said hot, okay. Well, coffee is supposed to be hot, so here we go. Okay, so now we have these images, cappuccino, espresso, hot coffee, with their names also. So now we can actually move to our content view. 
and see if we can actually display all the coffee along with their images in our uh, in our view. Right now, when it refreshes, you'll see that it will only display the text over here, hello world. So let's go ahead and remove the text and use something else. So I'm gonna use list over here. I mean, I can pass in something over here also to display that, or I can use a for each loop. So for each loop, we can run, um, let's actually get the model, state private var model equals to coffee dot all, okay? So this is, what, and this is what I'm talking about. Since this is our own data, you shouldn't be using state over here. I'm just using state because I just want to show you that uh, how to go from page one to page two. I will later on also show you that how you can use object binding, okay? So model is fine over here because model itself is an array. And now we can actually go ahead over here and get each coffee. And when we get each coffee, we can actually go ahead and print out something. So let's say coffee.name. So let's see how it actually displays. Let me go ahead and do a try again over here. Mm, should be fine actually. Let's go ahead and build that and resume. And there we go. You can actually see that the coffee is actually being displayed on the right hand side. This is great. But we also wanted to showcase the image. So let's go ahead and add the image. Um, so if I say over here, image coffee dot image URL, let's see if the image actually gets displayed or not. So now we're displaying the image as well as the text. Okay, it gets displayed, but it's way too big. So maybe what I want to do is to put both of these things inside a horizontal stack. So they are stacking in a horizontal or a row wise fashion. Obviously still the image might be too, ba uh, too big. So I'm gonna just say resizable image. And I'm also going to say frame the image so that its width is 100 and height is also 100. Let's see how the image now appears after we have resized it. It's gonna take a little bit of time. Okay, that looks fine, I guess. I mean, it can be a little bit bad better. Um, I don't know if you can actually set the aspect ratio over here. Sometimes it doesn't really pop up. You can see it's it's beta version. So the aspect ratio or the content mode is not really popping up for me. So we'll just leave it there. That's fine for now. Now what we need is we need a navigation bar at the top. So what I'm going to do is wrap everything, the whole list over here, which ends over here, I guess, into something called a navigation view. So navigation view. You can see that the IntelliSense or the suggestion is not really helping me out over here because it's a beta software. Uh, so it's sometime will not really help you out. I can also go ahead and maybe say navigation bar title and it takes in not a string but a text view and I can say uh, whatever coffee types whatever you want to say. And sometimes it will take a while for this to show up. Now you can see it shows up. The problem is that you can't really still, you cannot really click on any of these coffees. So in order to click on anything, you have to wrap them with something called a uh, navigation button. So let's go ahead and add a navigation button. There we go. Now navigation button does take an argument which we are going to add later on, but this is what it looks like. There we go. And I believe the navigation button, if it pops out, you can see the destination. So destination for the navigation button, which means that when we click the navigation button, where should it go? Right now, we're just gonna start small and we're gonna say that it will simply display us a text view with the name of the coffee and that's it. Let's go ahead and build that. And let's go ahead and say resume also over here. You should be seeing automatically the accessory view, the arrows should appear automatically. And we're just going to test it out that if we click on one of these coffees, it should take us to a different view. That will be only the text view. Okay, so there we go. You can see these arrows appearing. Now I can press this play button 
And the play button might take a little bit more time because it's trying to create a preview so that I can interact with it. So it might take a while for this to actually show up. And you can all also hear my CPU going crazy right now. Uh, it's because I'm running it on MacBook here and it's all beta software and Xcode 11 beta is, well, it's pretty buggy right now. Hopefully it will be fixed in the future, but you can see that I've clicked on it and it uh, it's not really working as expected. It, might, it will show up like after a while, but you can see that it's uh, it's pretty slow right now. Once it gets working, we should be able to click or touch or tap on any of these coffees and it will show us the text view. But most probably you don't really want to show a text view. Okay, so it failed kind of, you can see there. Um, you want to go to a different screen and show them like completely different uh, content, like maybe the image of the coffee and maybe the name of the coffee like that. You can see it's not really working for me. Uh, let me go ahead and restart this and see if it works. Okay, so here we go, so it's working now. And I can click on this coffee and you can see it actually takes me to a text view and passes in the coffee which we're passing over here. Great. So this is good, but we don't really want to display text view. We actually want to display an actual view, like a different view. So let's see how we can do that. Okay, so before actually creating the detail view, let's go ahead and a little bit refactor this out. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on over here right inside the body. So maybe I can click on this navigation button and uh, command click it and then say extract view. So what is this going to do is it's going to extract all of the view and I can actually rename this. So let's go ahead and say coffee cell. And then I will obviously rename this to coffee cell also. The, this is not going to compile because now I don't really have access to the coffee, but that's not a big deal because I can go to my coffee cell, the sub view, and I can actually create coffee, which will be of type coffee. And over here, I can simply go ahead and pass it. So coffee, which will be coffee. Great. So this is going to work fine. All right. Now let's go to the detail view. So we don't really have any detail view. So let's go ahead and add that. I'm going to go ahead and add a new file. And I'm going to go ahead and say over here, coffee detail maybe. You can see it's pretty slow on my machine. Coffee detail. Okay. Now coffee detail is simply a view. So import Swift UI. Um, structure coffee detail which will be a view. And if it's a view, the only thing it needs to implement is something called body, which will be some kind of a view. And inside the body over here, we can display anything we want. So I'm just gonna display a text and uh, well, coffee detail, starting small, okay? Just taking really small steps. We don't really have any preview for that. So that's not a big deal. We can simply go over here and copy the preview from here to my coffee detail. There we go. And change this out to say coffee detail. And this will also be coffee detail. Great. Now let's go ahead and preview it. I mean, the preview is not really going to show anything. It's just going to say coffee detail. We already know that. But now we can go back to our content view and instead of going to the text over here, we can actually go and say, go to the coffee detail view. But we need to also pass in the coffee. So I can simply say coffee is coffee. We're just passing the whole object. Now I can go to the coffee detail. You can see that it's not even expecting the coffee object. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. And now I should be able to display at least the coffee name. So coffee.name. And if I had a vertical stack, so I can, if I want to display an image, I can also do that. I can say image, which will be coffee.image URL. Okay, and that hopefully, oh, now we need to pass in something over here also, or else it's not going to work. So in this case, we will say coffee and I'm gonna use coffee.all and just display the first one. Just for the preview, I can actually do that because coffee.all is going to return me an array of coffees 
and then I'm just picking out the first one, passing it over here so it can use it for the preview. Um, and that's it. I mean, the preview should update. There we go. It actually did update it with the first one that I'm passing over here. I mean, obviously, if I pass in a different one, it will be different. Okay, now let's go to the content view. Let me go ahead and build it. And now we can click on this play button, which takes a while to show up. But this is going to allow us to interact with the application. And hopefully now when I click on or press or touch any of these coffee types, it will take me to a coffee detail screen passing in the selected coffee and then displaying the coffee name and the coffee image. All right. So once again, you can see it's taking a while, but uh, when it loads up, we'll be, we'll be back then. All right. So here we go. Now, if I click on the first one, you can see we go and we actually pass in the whole coffee object when we click on the second one and all of them are actually working correctly now. You can see that. And there you go. So that is how you actually pass information from one view to the other. It's not that difficult. It's pretty easy actually, right? Now, one other thing that I like to mention is that I have a course which is called Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for Any Apple Device, which is on Udemy. And this course is an ongoing course. It's, right now it's only two and a half hours, but I have been working very hard to update this course. But I want you to at least check out those two and a half hours. And I will be adding, obviously, a lot more content in the future. There's a lot more that I'm planning to do with this course. Uh, so if you are interested in this course and want to jumpstart your development with Swift UI, check out this course. The, the link to a coupon code where you can get the course for a very heavy discount is actually right in the description of this YouTube video. So make sure you click on that and get the discount. Now that discount coupons are very limited. So don't wait like till like two weeks and then you come like, oh, why, why didn't get it? Well, then you'll have to wait for another discount coupon, okay? So the coupon, the discount coupon is currently inside uh, the description of the YouTube video. And I really hope that you enjoy the course. I really had a fun creating this course and I'm still creating this course because there's just so much content to, uh, to deliver and so much content to cover. But I do want you to get kind of like a head start with two and a half hours of video that I have. And uh, by the time you watch that, I'll have more content to give you. So I really hope that you enjoy the course. And if you do, go ahead and uh, please rate and review the course. Your rating and review is extremely important. That helps me to create new content and to provide amazing educational material. Thank you so much for supporting my channel.